Hello lovely people, welcome to the Geek Hub I'm Penge and welcome back to Project Hospital where today we're going to build the entire hospitalisation part of the internal medicine department for this one person here, Mary Lewis. At the moment her lung sarcoidosis can't be treated but if we get hospitalisation set up in internal medicine then she'll have somewhere to go and her current problem can be looked at. So that's the plan. We build everything. We hire the staff, we build the rooms, the walls, we kit it all out, we unpause time and everything is going to be good for Mary here. So Mary, you should feel quite honoured because we're building a gigantic huge bit of the hospital essentially for you right now. We were going to leave it a little while for some more money to come in but then you appeared and said oh no I can't be treated and I feel a bit sad. So we're doing this for you Mary. Hopefully you will appreciate this. So let's get on with it shall we? There's no time like the present. So we've got the floors in which is quite good. So I think now it might be time for the walls. So if we go to there and we go to here I think we can do the corridors first that'll be nice and straightforward so hang on a second get the fancy sort of yeah there we go the fancy corridor room building thing on so we'll have that and then we'll drag that all the way up there and that's off to a good start and I think that's it I think that's it I think they're the only kind of bits of corridor that we have remaining so then of course we need to take out a few walls so take that bit out and take out that little bit there and take out that bit there Okay, so people can now walk about the place. This is all very good. So yes, looking good there. So now I think let's go and grab... I mean, they're the wards, aren't they? So we've got regular ward and a high dependency ward. How about we grab the wall over here for the... What's that? High dependency. And then we change it to our lovely pink colour. Very good. So that's high dependency. Hang on a second. Go back to that. So we shall have the wall set up for that. That's that sorted. And then we pop over to here to get the regular wall and then go over there for the regular ward. So that should be those two set up. So that's good as well. How much money have we got? Just over a hundred thousand dollars. I think we should be okay. I think we did kind of touch upon this on the previous part, but we might have to build things in a relatively limited way to begin with. So we might not have, you know, loads of beds in here. We might just have, you know, two or three possibly, but yeah, it'll be enough to get everything up and running. Then we've got the special rooms. Okay, so they're like this over here. They're like that just there, I think. So if we drop a that wall, yeah, it's like those things. Okay, so do that and make it pink. So what is it? It's kind of, yeah, bottom half is, so what's that, tiled is it? And the top half's just plain white. Okay, so then we can get all these rooms done. This thing here is such a time saver, it's wonderful. There we go, just pop that in there. And that one in there. Have we got any more of those? Yes, we have. Oh, we have many of those. Okay, well, hang on. So drag that in like that. There's a little one of those just there. And then we might possibly have to revert to doing single walls for this because otherwise it's going to get very complicated. But that's okay. It's not too difficult to do. So there we go around the edge of the elevator and then pop a wall in like that and pop a wall in like that. Okay, so that's all those sorted. Right, we need the doctor and the nurse room. So whereabouts is that over here? That's just there. Right, let's get that done, but in a lovely shade of pink. And this is all going to be one big room. It's not going to be multiple rooms. Might as well have this one big room. That's that done. And I think all that's left is the bathroom over there and the break room over here, which of course aren't essential. We don't need those in, but we'll, yeah, we'll get the wall sorted anyway for the sake of completeness. So there's a bathroom just there. Okay, so grab that and go like that for the lovely pink walls of the bathroom. That'll be quite nice. And then the break room. Hang on a second. Which way around are we? There's the break room there. So like that and then make that pink. And then the break room walls can go in. Okay. So yeah, money is still looking pretty good. Right, let's go and get some doors in then. Sure, they're going to be quite important as well. So I think for the bathroom, let's put the door just there. So we can have something along here, like a hand dryer, a bin, or a lovely plant, or whatever. Um, and then that, are they going to want... What door have we got on the um, the break room? Right, so the break room's got a sort of restricted area thing, which makes sense. The other ones are going to have... What are the other ones going to have? Hang on a second. Let's go and put that on first. So pop that along. We'll just put it at the end like that. That's fine. Right, these are going to be... The patients need to go into those. So do they need to be sort of locked away? Ah, right. This one here, we do want to have a door just there. And I think a door directly opposite. That might be quite... Hang on, hang on. Maybe not, actually. Put a door in the middle over here, look. 
put a door just there. And that means that over here we could have, say, a little collection of trolleys or whatever. We could have some like stretcher type things and some wheelchairs. And that means, yeah, that door there that people can walk through. So the nurses and the doctors can either go out that way if they need to use those rooms or out here if they need to go to the wards rather than having to walk all the way round. There we go. That might save a little bit of time. Um, what else do we have? So the wards just have, yeah, the doors with the round windows in them. Okay, that's fine. Double door with oval windows with the appropriate lovely thing on there, the lovely pink. Um, let's have... Uh, let's have them at either end like that. And then we can again have a plant or something useful in the corner for them. And we'll do the exact same thing over here. Wonderful. Okay, so people can get into the wards. The doctors and the nurses can get into their particular room. People can get into the break room. And people can get into the loo, which again is handy. No loo in there. A bit of a surprise if they do go in. But there we go. Um, so then, yeah, it's just the, um, the kind of the special rooms with the special equipment in. Oh, hang on. We haven't done the lounge. Oh, I do apologise, lounge. Hang on a second. Hang on. There is a lounge somewhere over here. There it is. Sorry, lounge. I forgot about that. What wall does the lounge have? I'm not entirely sure. Um, oh, hang on. We might need to do that again with the single wall because it is going around this um, this elevator lift type thing image here. That might get a little bit awkward. Okay, right. Rotate it around and across like that and across like that. Right. What door does the... Um, the lounge have that just has a door ah a, like a nice door with a window in it that's good a single one of those so we shall have that for the lounge where do we put the door for that exactly um i'm thinking i'm thinking the people using the lounge are going to be going to and from the wards so it might make sense to have the door kind of just here so they can see it so they can walk down the corridor and then go into the lounge that would make sense. I quite like that. So I can kind of walk from here and into there. They're not going to get lost walking around here or whatever. Or you know, we don't need the door over here because then people are going to be going, where is it? The lounge is round here. Put the door there nice and obvious as you walk out of the wards. And then, yeah, we need the um, the doors for those. So what do we have here? Uh, I mean, that's got a biohazard door because that's dealing with blood. Are any of these dealing with blood? I don't think they are. What are these rooms again? Remind me, game. Remind me. Um, hang on. Pressing the right button would certainly help, wouldn't it? So we've got diagnostic units. They don't need a kind of biohazard door. Cardiography and special procedures. Okay. So again, I don't think they need anything overly fancy. I mean, yeah, that one's just got a classic sort of white door on there. So pop that onto there because that's like a cardio blood work room type thing. Uh, and we'll put that just there. Uh, which one's that one? That's the... Oh, yeah, that's the kind of the observation, whatever that is. That's that room, isn't it? What was that again? The diagnostic unit. Okay, so they've again got just a plain white door. Okie doke. We shall put those in so that can go there. And that one can go just there. And I think, yeah, in these rooms here, we'll just have the same thing again. We'll have the classic white door. I can't get it kind of the way around. I'd like it. Hang on a second and like that there we go and then there's one more along here somewhere so pop that there okay i think now all the rooms are set up as in yeah they've got floors and walls and doors people can actually access these rooms at the moment they've got no need to because they're completely empty and it's a bit rubbish but we can sort that out so here we go let's get some stuff in here now now we get into the now we get into the expensive stuff but it's all going to be fine so modern hospital beds that's what we've got. More comfort for patients. So if we just go along here and then I've just thought that's the edge of the hospital. We can have windows. Oh, it shall be glorious. OK, hang on a minute. So pop that just there. So the purple arrow is where the doctors and the nurses go. So pop a bed there and then we shall have a lovely bedside cabinet. However, hang on a second. Hang on. We're going to change. Yeah, we're going to have red beds. Because I didn't realise we could change the colours of the beds. I've only just noticed that last time. So, yeah, we can have red beds to go with the kind of the pink department. That's quite fun. Right, bedside table. Um, can we pick the colour of the bedside table? No, it's, ju it's just that colour. And that's kind of what you get. And then we will have the bed socket thing. Because I quite like those. Cast a little light over the bed look. And I think that's all we need. We do need the um, defibrillators. So let's put them on the wall just there and just there and I think that is 
a valid ward. I mean, it's a rubbish ward right now because it's got one bed in it and one bedside table and that's kind of it, but it's valid and that's kind of what counts. So I think, yeah, if we then get another one of those set up, so we go like that and then we go like that. So get two more of these. So pop those in and then get the bed sockets. Go like that and like that. That's all. No, it's not done. It's not done. We are missing a couple of very important things. Important thing number one is a plant, of course. Um, can we put the plants in front of the defibrillators? Seemingly we can. The game is fine with that. They can lean over the um, over the plant to get the defibrillator. Um, okay. Can we have the slightly bigger plants? No. That's interesting. So that plant is too big. Hang on, can we have the little plant? Yes, we can. Okay, there's a concept of height with that. I'd never really considered that. Yeah, those plants are too big. They get in the way, but some of the plants are little and they don't get in the way. Okay, do you know what? We'll have the little ones with the red bits on because they're quite nice. Um, oh, there you go. I never knew that. We've learned something new about plants and height and such like. Right, okay, so that's lovely. And then, of course, we need little bits of wall. We need the kind of the privacy wall things in. So grab that a second and then just draw that in like that. We'll draw that in like, do you know what? We'll do it, hang on, how far is it? One, two, three. So one, two, three, one, two, three. And then that one there sort of, okay. Right, and then of course we need to go around and do the other side because that would be silly if it wasn't done. Um, I'm sure there are many bits of wall that aren't finished off like that. I'm sure there's lots, but for now that will do. Okay, so regular ward up and running. 93 grand remains in here. I think for now we get ourselves because this is more expensive because we have to put the bed in and the bedside table, but also like yeah, advanced life support things, you know, expensive machines that go bing and bong and boop and keep people alive. So um, let's get the modern bed in a lovely shade of red. That was lovely and poetic. So pop that in like that. Bedside cabinet can go just there because we know the deal. Bed socket can go just there. And then, oh, hang on defibrillators on the wall, defibrillators on the wall. Uh, very important, let's get those plants in. Let's have a different plant in this ward. In this ward. We'll have a couple of those there, whatever they are, Dracineas or something. Right, and then, yes, we have to have these things. So let's go for the advanced, life monitor advanced, because if we're gonna do it, we might as well do it properly. Um, can we have that in a kind of a red color? And then we pop that there, and that is sorted. Do we want to get another one of those? Just one more bed over here in high dependency right now, just to really make sure that we're okay. I think maybe another one might be quite a good idea. So hang on a second, do the whole thing over here again, like so, and like so. And um, and then yeah, we'll just, we'll just pick up and copy that. That's fine. We'll just sort of copy that to just there. Oh, it's dragged the extra bit of wall from over here, no. No, not extra bits of wall game. No, away with this. Okay, so there we go. Right, that is a valid high dependency unit. It's a, again, it's a terrible one at the minute, but it's valid and it works and that's what counts. Okay, right, that's good. What else do we need to actually make it properly work? So we need one diagnostic unit and then the, yeah, the nurse and the doctor room. Okay, so let's go and do a diagnostic unit, shall we? Um. I think what we'll do is for now, let's get everything up and running over here and then we'll fill those three rooms uh, rooms up over time. But I think over here, get all these three things set up and that'll all be good. Um, so diagnostic unit, is this gonna be a bit of a push for the diagnostic unit? Because it's very small. It's a very teeny tiny room. What does that need? That doesn't need much. Um, I say it doesn't need much, it needs quite a lot of stuff. Can we fit all this in? Okay, here we go. Let's give it a go, shall we? It, we're like a challenge. Right, so if we try and tuck that right to the edge, like, if we put that there, look, then we can have the examination lamp right next to it. There we go. So we've got some stuff done. The eye test can go right down there because that's perfect. Okay, so we'll put that round. We'll have a couple of bins, of course we will. We'll have that. And we'll, oh no, I didn't mean to put that in a minute. No, no, that's the post to pick up the bin. Rotate the bin round, there we go. Uh, hang on, very important, possibly the most important thing. We have to have a lovely plant. Let's have that one in the corner like so. 
back into here. Right, disinfectant dispenser. That can go on the wall just there. Right, we're getting through these things. This is good. Mobile workstation. We need some equipment, possibly. And then we do need a few tables, including that as well. Spirometer measures ventilation, a volume of inspired and expired air. Okay, right. So that's what, how good you, how sort of how well you're breathing, I think that is. Okay, if we put the chart board there so people can do advanced diagnosis shenanigans and then what else have we got we've got the nice glass tabley things i quite like them have we got them uh, oh they're down there yes right okay so i think what we'll do is if we have three of those along there like that and then on there we can put these things so put the audiometer on that one crp scan on that one and then the spirometer on that one that clears out quite a lot of things that we need. We do need somewhere where they can wash their hands. And again, I do like the whole sort of um, the whole sort of uh, bit we have a kitchen sink and uh, whatever it is, one of the things over here. Uh, where is it? Stainless steel cabinet. So let's have one of those as well. Let's pop that. I mean, we could put it there. We could put that just there. If I know the equipment can go over there. Do you know, we'll put it there. That's OK. Hang on a minute. Just nip to there a second. Grab ourselves a mirror so we can put the mirror just there. Go back to here, get a kitchen sink, put it on the top. I think that works well. I like that because as well, it's got towels underneath it so you can dry your hands. That does make a lot of sense. And now we just need equipment. So I think, yeah, we'll take it. We'll have a mobile workstation because that does seem to be quite a good thing. I'll make it red, however, thank you. So pop that there. And then, yes, it's just a case of equipment. So if we spin that round like that, look at the floor over there. <laughs> the floor over there is filthy. What's going on? Um, yes, yeah, so if we have, I don't know, a couple of the tall equipment cabinets like that and get another one as well. I know we don't need another one, but I like them. So there we go. Right. That is one of the diagnostic units all set up. What just pinged up at 400 and whatever it was money? Oh, I think I might have clicked something inadvertently and spent a load of money on something. What did I just put down? Did I just put down something that I didn't need to put down? Uh, I don't know. I don't think I did. Have I just done something incredibly silly? I might have done something incredibly silly. We'll find out in due course, I imagine. Right, so that room is now all done. That's good. So then I think, yes, let's get this done. And that means the department will be at least be valid. And then we can do these two rooms with the money that we have remaining. Right, so over here we go. I mean, really, ideally... We don't need the doctor room to be quite that big. The nurse's room does need to be a little bit bigger because they do have all the stretchers and meal trays and wheelchairs and everything else. So I think maybe, maybe we do make that a bit bigger. I mean, do we have, how about actually, how about what we could do is, ah, I have had an idea and this is going to be fine. Right, hang on a second. So nurse's station, how about we just sort of run that across like that? Because the doctors don't need a lot of room. They need a desk, a desk and a chair and a computer. And that's kind of it. Whereas the nurses need to have all the stretchers and things. So why don't we do that? So let's have quite a number of these. How much is a stretcher? Um, can't quite remember. So if we put the stretchers there, only $200. Oh, it's an absolute steal. Uh, we'll have three of those. And I think then two wheelchairs. Um, none of those overly red. Let's just have them as white wheelchairs. So a couple there like that. And that's fine. And then over here can be where all the other things go. So all the desks and equipment and everything else can go over here. And then the doctors, they just need some of these. Right. So how many doctors were we thinking of having and nurses? I think what are the minimum requirements? So doctors, we need at a bare minimum one doctor and one nurse on the day shift and the same on the night shift. That seems a little bit minimal, I would say. I think that might cause problems. I think we need at least three doctors on the day shift and possibly two on the night shift. And then we need four nurses on the day shift and possibly two on the night shift. So the doctors are going to need a couple of desks because I think, yeah, we need three on the day shift. And then... Yeah, and the nurses are going to need two desks as well. Okay, because yeah, with the fancy glass desks, we can put two people on each one, which is brilliant. Okay, so how about then the doctors could go... I mean, yeah, we can make it quite... That is relatively spacious. We can make that quite nice. 
we could put some lovely things in here. How about, hang on, hang on. How about we could have a desk like that, and then we could have a desk like that with the nurses facing them just so they can have a nice chat about things. That might be quite good. Um, and then the other one could go, say, along here, possibly. Uh, it's a bit near the door, actually, isn't it? If we took that into... Hang on. Why don't we just put one there, look? One just there, look. That's fine. And the other one can go over there. And then we can put some equipmenty things in that corner. Um... Okay, right, so let's grab some PCs. PC on every desk. You can put PCs on the tables over there. <laughs> Make them do some work whilst they're eating their lunch. Right, there we go. Lots of money going on computers. Right, office chairs. Yes, we shall have the lovely red one. So one to many chairs going in, but this is all good. All important stuff. There we go. Lots of lovely wheelie office chairs. There's a big long corridor there that you can have like wheelie office chair races in when it's quiet, not when it's busy. Thank you. Um, okay, so that room, I think, uh, oh, hang on, they need a printer. They need a printer. So what I think we'll do is put another thing there like that and then put the printer onto there. We'll have a gigantic printer as well. So put that there and then we've got a little space there for something else. So can we put something nice just there? Can we put something fun there? I think in the corner we can have a plant, of course. Oh, hang on, clock. I do like having a clock in these rooms as well. That's quite good. A uh, clock and a clock. A clock in there would not go miss either, would it? That's quite good. Um, right, so yes, back over to here. So yeah, we need a plant. So let's get a plant to pop into the corner. Uh, let's have one of those, shall we? Let's have one of those. Put that in the corner. Um, and then, yeah, on here, what can we put on there? Because I like all this. We could put, we could put a cactus or a mug or a little flower. Just a little flower. That might be quite nice. It's a dainty flower in a red, is it a red flower? A little red flower. Okay, that's a lovely. And I think, I mean, do you want to put a bookcase just to make it look all bloody -di dire and fancy? I suppose we could put a bookcase in and a bin. Can we put a bin in there? That might be quite nice. We could pop a bin into that room. That wouldn't be too terrible a thing, would it? Just to keep things tidy. So pop a bin into there. Right. On call room sorted, nurse's room not sorted, lacking equipment, but we have got the right amount of desks and such like. So we need the meal trays. So I think what we'll do is, hang on, hang on. More important things than that. They also do need a lovely plant. Uh, you can have one of those, pop that in the corner and then meal trays. So I think if we just line up, I don't know what, just a, you know, two of those along there, two like that. And then they can have a mobile equipment cabinet. How about you have a couple of those like... Oh, that didn't, that didn't put a couple down that I was expecting. Um, it's blocked by another object. Oh, the clock. The clock that's high up on the wall is blocking the place into this low-down cabinet. Okay. <laughs> right you are, game, whatever you say. Um, like that. And then... I mean, that's valid. That's a valid room right now. It looks a little bit bit bare isn't it it's a little bit bare be quite a, what can go in that corner hang on they've got, we can put put another table in that corner what can we have in there i mean do they not need a printer or whatever i kind of feel like they should have a printer um let's grab them a printer because that would help wouldn't it maybe they need to print important documents out so you can have a printer in there and then on that corner what can we have what do the nurses want? Oh, scrubs. Scrubs would actually help quite a bit. Let's have, I know that colour. We'll put them uh, there to get some scrubs as you go by. And that applies to both of these. So yeah, they can walk through that door and grab some scrubs or walk over to there and grab some. That's okay. Uh, what can we put on there? Hang on. Let's go over to here. How about some files? Very important files going on. There we go. Key to everything. Paperwork. Lovely. Um... And I think that will do. I think that is everything we need to make that valid. So at the moment, everything is now valid. We could open the department up, but let's get these two rooms in as well. Have we got enough money? We're going to at least get one of these in. A special procedures unit. The only reason being we haven't got one yet. Never had one of these. So what do we need? It's kind of like a mini operating room. But I don't think it's quite as quite as serious as the proper operating lounges over here. It's like a little mini one of those. Okay, so operating table. 
I mean, do we do the operations up there? Is that going to be a bit of a squeeze? I suspect so. All the equipment and stuff can go up there, possibly. Um, yeah, okay, so I think, yeah, we'll put it over here, look. So that can be where the operations take place. Ah, that was 5,000 money. <laughs> oh, that was expensive. Um, okay. Oh, hang on a minute. Is that the wrong way round? If I got that the wrong way round? Oh, yeah. Do we want it that way? Do we want it like that? Possibly we do. Hang on a minute. Hang on. Is that valid? Oh, can we have that there? It can be placed just there. Okay, so we need an ENT workstation to go just there. Oh, it's very costly. Um, operating room lights... Uh, yeah, we'll have the lovely red shade, so we'll have, hang on, so like that, and then the other ones sort of like that, okay, and then we need a, oh, I don't know what that is, Thora Synthesis device, we all know what one of those is, right, uh, we'll have it in the red again, please, and we'll pop that just there, okay, right, so that is now kind of valid, instruments table, can go wherever. It's got, I like the way it's picking up the right colours. It can have that lovely cloth on it. That's quite good. Um, that can go just there. We've got a bit of room over that side and a bit of room over there. So what I'm thinking is, have a bin there and a bin. Oh, hang on. I didn't turn that around. And a bin there. We can have some equipment over there. And yeah, over here, I think is where they're going to want to get, do they need like scrubs? Is that what they need? I don't know. Disinfectant can go on the wall there though. That's fine. Um, yeah, do they need to go and wash their hands and stuff? There's a warming cabinet, a big one, wall-mounted equipment, mobile workstations and equipment cabinets. I kind of feel like maybe we should have like a sanitary bit over there where they can yeah, wash their hands and such like. And then over here we can have a big wall of equipment. That would make sense. So let's just get a couple of these. Let's change the colour of the cabinet to eh, that colour. Why not, eh? That'll do. So like that. And then we'll have another one like that. And then how about another instruments table just there, just in case that helps. And then what can we put just there? We could put something just there. Do you know what can go just there? A lovely plant. Of course it can. It's a perfect place for a lovely plant. Um, yeah, pop that there. And then over here, we shall have, yeah, all the sanitary stuff. So, oh, hang on a minute. Should we possibly have put a warming cabinet around the place somewhere? Do you know what? The big warming cabinet can go just there next to the uh, original set of sort of instrument table thing with Bob just there um mobile workstation surgery instruments oh hang on ah ah right okay yes they go on those tables that would make sense okay so loads of surgery stuff and then yes yeah, it's just a case of a mobile workstation now have that in red put that there maybe like that and then over here how about then hang on so could we have, say, they might not use this. They might not need to even go here. But I think if we could have a bit where they could like wash their hands and such like, can we get glass? Can we get like a glass wall in? That would be quite good, wouldn't it? What have we got over here again? Hang on a second. Hang on. What do we have over there? Um, oh, they're giant windows, aren't they? Okay, so I think we can just, we can get away with going, well, let's drip and drop the right wall anyway. So go like that and go like that, and then turn them into the giant kind of glass things like that. Okay, and then this bit here can just be a sanitary bit where they can go, you know, wash their hands and such like, we don't need it, but you know what, it's fine. We've got 50 grand remaining, it'll all be good. So let's get that in. So how about we have sanitary equipment can go there, and then a couple of sinks maybe. But do we want, yeah, scrubbing sinks because you're going to do some operation stuff. So a couple of those, they are quite expensive. I know we don't need this, but we're doing it for fun. Um, so that's okay. Um, is that, why is, there, why is there a stretcher in the, hang on, what? Why is there a stretcher going into the cafeteria? <laughs> What's going on there? That's a bit weird. Okay, there's a stretcher going into the cafeteria. I'm not quite sure why. Um, and then I want to get some scrub shelves. Because, yeah, they can come into here, walk through here, go and have a wash, and then put their scrubs on. So I think they can go into here, grab the tall scrub shelves, and we'll just put one there and one there. Okay, that room is done. Have we got enough money to set up one of these? Uh, a, what is it? A cardiography unit. 
I'm not entirely convinced we have. I think these are relatively expensive. Um, USG, yeah, I mean, that's $5,000. The USG on its own is five grand. And then we need all the other stuff as well. So maybe, for now, we hold off on that. Hopefully lots of people can come in and give us lots of money. We can build that up. And, you know, Mary Lewis, who's over there somewhere at the minute, um, she might pay us a load of money as well. I mean, she does owe us a little bit for setting up an entire hospitalization bit of the hospital for her individual benefit at the moment. Um, okay, so that's looking good. So now, of course, the only thing we have left to do is go and hire some staff. So let's begin. Yeah, we're going to hire, so I think, yeah, three doctors on the day shift. I mean, do we start with two? Do we begin with two and notch it up to three? Or do we just get it up at three and just hope that's enough? I think three, you know what, we're going to do it properly. Again, if we're going to do it, let's do it properly. So three on the day shift, four nurses, and one of those nurses should be assigned specifically to stretcher duty, I believe. And then at night time, two doctors and two nurses. So hang on, that's three doctors plus four is seven plus two plus two eight nine we're gonna hire 11 people oh we're gonna have no money left okay right here we go <laughs> let's plunge ourselves back into bankruptcy i'm sure it'll be fun right okay so let's get the let's get the doctors in so hang on a minute hang on a minute like that there we go see the doctor's bits um, i mean let's get them over here look on that table that's quite nice so who have we got available? Please be really good at doing all of the sort of internal medicine stuff, because that's what we want you to do. Um, okay, we have got a few good people. The only thing is everyone is hiding secrets from us. So I think we have to spend a grand to reveal the secrets. Okay, Brooke Baker and Susan Harris are looking pretty good. You two are looking good. Barbara Miller is looking good, apart from her alcoholic tendencies. She's a scholar... She's very good at practical diagnoses and she's a diagnostic genius, but unfortunately she is a bit of an alcoholic. Oh, that puts us in a very difficult position. Botherations. Um, okay, Susan Harris, I think. Let's get Brooke Baker. Get Brooke Baker in first. You can come in on the day shift. That's good. And then also on the day shift. Oh, now Nancy Martinez has appeared. And we don't know what your secrets are. Um, we'll get in Susan Harris as well, because you're good people, person, practical diagnosis, and you're a germaphobe. You like washing your hands. That's okay. Right, so Susan Harris, you can come in as well. Is it worth... Have we got space in here to put a sink? Have we got space in there to have a little sink so the nurses and doctors can go there and wash their hands? That might be quite sensible. Might get rid of one of the mobile workstations, because we do only need one of those. And let's put in, let's do the whole, hang on, where is it? That thing. Grab that as a, oh no, but then it's going to grab the wall, isn't it? That's going to be a bother. Um, okay, hang on. Rebuild one of those things. A stainless steel cabinet. Yes, please. And then we want to get a kitchen sink in the top. There we go. And then go to there and grab a nice mirror so you can look at yourself and make sure your scrubs look absolutely marvellous. There we go. So they can go in there and you wash their hands. So rather than having to go all the way to the bathroom, down there or over here or wherever they go, they can just go to there and do it. That might save a bit of time. Okay, right, that's quite good. And that went all over the place, wonderful. Um, okay, so two doctors on the day shift. Third one on the day shift required. Okay, so now Nancy Martinez has appeared. She's quite good, she's hiding things. And Nancy Allen isn't quite so good. Okay, so I think we spend another grand to reveal the secrets of Nancy Martinez. Ah, oh, botherations. I don't want the alcoholic trait. I think that's going to be really bad. If they show up late, that's yeah, okay. That's not the end of the world. It's okay. If they show up hungover, surely that's going to impact their performance. And they might possibly make a terrible mistake while they're doing some sort of you know, really critical operation. I don't think that's acceptable in a hospital environment. I don't think that's that's not what we want here. That's a little bit bad. I mean, if you two want to go, yeah, we'll gladly help you sort this out. I will gladly sort of set up some sort of treatment thing and you can get it all sorted and it shall be brilliant. But um, yeah, I think we have to overlook them for now, which is a shame for Barbara because she's really good. But yeah, that's a bit of a, it's a bit of a no-go. Um, Nancy Allen, practical diagnosis, good boss, dirty feet, fast learner, 
but also she is not very good. But do we... Oh, now this is intriguing. Do we hire her? Do we hire her and then just train her up a lot? Do we just train her? I mean, okay, she's got dirty feet. We'll have to hire another janitor, possibly. That's okay. But yeah, fast learner, so she can level up skills a lot. Good bosses, okay, we already got a boss, thank you. But yeah, also practical diagnoses. That's really good. 20% bonus experience of diagnosis skill after successful diagnoses. I mean, do we go for that? Or do we go for... I mean, that's really good. Diagnostic genius is very good. Or do we scrap the whole lot and just start again? Because, of course, we need the night shift as well. We do need the night shift. Um, do you know what? Do you know what? Nancy Allen, I apologise. And everyone else, sorry, but we're going to refresh the list. Here we go. New candidates. I'm um, just checking. We don't need, like, anesthesiology people. We don't need any special people. We don't, It's just literally doctors and nurses. We don't need people with different skills or whatever. Okay. Right, another grand going on revealing their secrets. Let's have a little look. Frank Jones. Ah, oh, we've got some <laughs> some great people with some terrible traits. So you might be late and you're also because you live far away. And also, yes, you're an alcoholic, but you're a people person and you've got practical diagnosis. Robert Garcia has clean feet. You're pleasant and you have resistance. You're not very good, but I think maybe you could be the one that we train up on the day shift. Maybe you could be our kind of one that we just keep sending for training. Susan Hill is a germaphobe and is loyal, but your stats are okay. And Charles Lewis. Charles Lewis is a good boss, hard worker, diagnostic genius. Okay, I think then on the night shift, let's get Charles Lewis in on the night shift. He's got one person in on the night shift. This is good. And I think... We get another doctor on the night shift. Uh, Linda King has appeared. I mean, do we go for Susan? Susan's okay. Susan's pretty good. And the other person is really good. So yeah, they can sort of yeah, help each other out a bit. So get Susan in, I think. And then on the day shift, our third doctor, I think here we go for Robert. I think we go for Robert here because he's got some pretty good stats going on and we can keep levelling him up. I think that's quite good. Although Frank Scott has appeared... And Frank Scott is an early bird who works better during the day and is incredibly good at his job. But he's a little bit more expensive than Robert is. Uh, also, he's got two hidden things. Now, do you know what? We're going to stick with our guns and go with Robert. We said that earlier. Let's go for you, Robert, and we can keep levelling you up. Okay, so now we've got the five doctors in. Three on the day shift, two on the night shift, which is wonderful. So I think now what we'll do is... We'll go and do the wonderful Wheel of Names on this. So get all the doctors sorted. And then we'll do the Wheel of Names again when all the nurses have been hired. Because otherwise this is going to be a great big list of me reading the names out. So let's do, you know, bit by bit. Let's pop over to the Wheel of Names. And uh, yeah, see who's going to join us over here as doctors in internal medicine. Okay, the Wheel of Names has done its thing. Which means we can go and meet the new starters. So on the day shift, we have JJ Liu. And also we have Daniel. And then over here, we've got Holy Man of Cakes. Who's our kind of new trainee person who we need to train up a little bit. Now they did ask for the name to be all one name. But again, there's not much in the way of character limit in the names in Project Hospital. So I split it up into two. So essentially, we have Dr. Cakes, which I quite like. So Dr. Cakes, we can train up quite a lot and make them wonderful. That's very good. And then on the night shift, we have Ducky Duck. And then we have Grey Teapot. So welcome aboard all of you new doctor people. That is wonderful. I must remember to go and send Dr. Cakes off for training. So that's all good. So the doctors are in. That is wonderful. We've got five doctors, three on the day shift, two on the night shift. That's good. Now we need to hire a gigantic load of nurses. I think four on the day shift and two on the night shift. I think that'll keep things ticking over quite well. So let's get the ones over there done again, shall we? Because I quite like the idea of that look. So they can yeah, be chatting over here. Um, hang on. Oh, how how does that work? Oh, no, of course, yes, there's two spaces because, yes, there's one desk, isn't there? But it's the, the glass desks. So you can have two people on them. Right, okay, so fill these up here. So let's go to the nurses. Now, do we, again, need special skills? I don't think we do. It just looks like that one. It looks like that one, possibly with a bit of clinical nurse specialist. That might help out quite a bit. Okay, so who have we got that looks any good? Jane Clark, not great. Daniel Allen is looking okay. So we might get you in. 
Fast metabolism. Hunger increases much faster, so you might need to go and have a little bit more to eat. I think possibly then, given you might be out and about eating a lot, let's put Daniel Allen on the night shift, because it's likely that the night shift, most people in the department are going to be asleep. So if you're nipping off to have some more food because you're a bit hungry, because of your metabolism, then that's probably not going to be so much of a bother. And you are quite good as well. So you go in there on the night shift. Okay, so that's one of the two on the night shift. Um, oh, Susan Young. Susan Young, you're coming in on the day shift immediately because you're good at working on the day shift. Patient care is 74%. You've got medical surgery, which might not be entirely useful, but you've got no other hidden skills. So that's really good. So you can come in on the day shift, Susan Young. You can do some good stuff. And I think the game is now happy with that department. There was a bit of lag there. But yeah, look, there we go. We've got the minimum requirement now. It's all sorted. Okay, but we're not happy with this ourselves. Right, so back over to who's coming up next. Um, I mean, yeah, we don't need medical surgery as such. This is going to be more useful. Lisa Garcia has a long commute and lives, yeah, she lives far away and she's got two hidden things as well. Do you know what? I know it's going to dent our finances, but it's time to find some new candidates. Two and a half grand, oh dear. Um, okay, two of these are okay. Linda Robinson's good, works better in the day, and resistance. Okay, you can come in on the day shift, and then we need another night shift person. Uh, so again, go to there. Who do we have? Elizabeth Thomas. She's okay. Clinical nurse specialist, 38% patient care. Um, she's a hard worker, so she doesn't take free time breaks, which I know isn't great, but she hasn't got any of the other really terrible things either. She's sort of okay. So you can go in on the night shift. Okay, so the night shift I think is okay. And now we just need a couple of, couple of day shift people and we should be fine. I think that will do the job. And one of these people is just going to be pushing people about on the stretcher. That's going to be their sole job. That's all we need them to do. So they don't need to be incredible everything. Patient care should be okay. Um, I mean, yeah, can we find somebody that's relatively cheap? Susan King. How about you, Susan, with your incredibly clean feet? You can poodle about the place and just push people about on trolleys. That'd be okay. You're a nursing intern. That seems like a good kind of intern level thing to do. And eventually you can progress and be amazing. Uh, also... Yeah, nice and affordable as well. $98. That is wonderful. So Susan King can come in and she can be the person on trolley duty. I think on the night shift, we don't need a trolley person specifically. Because again, it's going to be quieter on the night shift, hopefully. Um, and then our final person on the day shift. Can we get somebody with that skill that's good? 33%. So you've got resistance. Um, so hang on, this is one of these weird conflicting things. Fresh parent, rest levels decrease faster. Resistance, rest levels decrease slow. So rest levels are just sort of normal, I suppose. Um, but they do have a hidden perk. And the others are not overly good. Okay, this is the last time we do this. The last time we go and find new candidates. Please be really good people. Oh, they're all... Oh, these are all rubbish. Okay. <laughs> Oh dear, we need somebody who's a clinical nurse specialist. We only have one of those and we need another one. So yeah, I said it was the last time we're going to do that. This is the last time we're going to do this. Okay, 40%. There we go. Uh, hang on a minute. We're going to reveal the perks. Um, okay, so we've got you, fast learner and fast. Okay, you're just generally quick. You're like the Sonic the Hedgehog of, of this particular department. Okay, Robert Adams though, people person, fresh parent and loyal. Karen Martinez, germaphobe. That's annoying because you've got the 40% in it. Um, fast metabolism and a hard worker. Okay, I'm thinking, I'm thinking maybe we go for either Robert Adams or Jennifer Cole. Jennifer Cole's got, she's only got patient care 27% though. That's just basic. She's quite good at the clinical nurse specialist stuff. But in terms of general patient care, she's not that good. Do you know what? Let's go for Robert Adams then. So you've got some pretty good skills going on. You're okay. Rest levels decrease faster. That's fine. We'll you know, deal with that. Um, yeah, let's get you in. So Robert Adams can come in as well. So just a quick check. Four on the day shift, 
two on the night shift. Okay, wonderful stuff. And now with all the people selected, we all know what comes next. Say it along with me. We have to go over to the Wheel of Names. Okay, there we go. Six more spins on the Wheel of Names. So let's go and see who's joining us in internal medicine as nurses. So we have over here Aradork, and Aradork is going to be our patient transfer person. So let's just untick that allowed draw there. So they're going to be solely dealing with patient transfers. Very important job, Aradork, on the day shift. And then also on the day shift, we have Man Manfred Schmeckles. And then over here on the day shift, we've got Ashley Nicole and we've got Captain Toast. So we've got Nurse Toast, which is wonderful. And then on the night shift, we have ourselves BSO and we've got Awu Card. So welcome aboard all of you new starters over here in our brand new hospitalization bit of internal medicine. Now, just before I forget as well, Holy Man of Cakes, we can send you away to do some training right now. So let's do that before I forget. So here we go. Go and just study uh, know, general medicine. That will do for now. So I think that's all we need. I think that's all we need right now. We're down to $34,500, which isn't very much at all. But we do have this whole gigantic department ready now. I mean, OK, over there looks a little bit limited. And maybe we might possibly have to invest in a few more beds over there to make things work properly. But then, of course, we've got all that down there to sort out as well. Those rooms are relatively expensive to set up, so maybe we won't see those for a while. But I think we're OK. So let's go and check over here, look. So Mary Lewis, who apparently can't be treated, as soon as we unpause time, she should be able to be treated. I think then she can be our very first patient over in the internal medicine hospitalization department bit. So here we go. Let's unpause time and let's see what happens. So Mary Lewis... Hang on a minute. Still says can't be treated. Why? Uh, yeah, regular hospitalization. Hospitalize a patient at a regular ward. I mean, is that what she needs? Hang on, what does she need exactly? She needs corticosteroids. Hang on, so what do we need for those? Any office or a diagnostic unit. Okay, I think we do have a diagnostic unit. It's just there. It should be okay. It should be fine. Maybe... Do the doctors and nurses need to like sit down at their desks or something? I'm not entirely sure. Um, okay, what we'll do is let's put you into regular hospitalization. Let's pop you into there. And that means you can go to bed, have a little sit down and somebody will be with you shortly. So let's just make sure you actually get to where you need to go. So let's go to here and we shall focus on you. Just make sure that everything is okay. So right, run time on a bit quicker because you're taking a while to get there. Little bit worn out, all the way over there into the big empty room. There we go, look, that nurse, who was that? That was Awukard, already checking on our very first patient over here in internal medicine's uh, proper hospitalization bit. Right, so follow you. Right, get time ticking on till morning. Right, somebody coming over. Oh, hang on, right, already you're going over in tears. So you are having this dealt with, hopefully, because that is one of the... Uh, sort of whatever it is, treatment room type things. Why is it so dark in there? I mean, I, I realise it's night time, but surely you'd put the lights on. <laughs> like in there, look, they've got the lights on in there. Why haven't you got the lights on? Is, is there something about this room that I've not set up correctly? Did I want to install a light switch or anything? No, nope, you're just going to wander off and leave her in the dark in that room. <laughs> okay, <laughs> brilliant. Right, okay, here comes a person with a stretcher. That's quite helpful. Okay. Um, oh, Christopher Barclay's having a bit of a collapse. Oh, Chris, they'll get you in time. It's fine. They're very good at that. Um, Dusty Rivers finished training um, in diagnosis. Okay, so I think over time that will increase. So maybe just get a couple of um, a couple of uh, level ups, well, sort of your know, training sessions in acute medicine. You go and do that when you can. And then I think, yeah, you're going to be pretty good. Okay, so let's get that ticking on, shall we? So she's gone back over here. Oh, no, hang on a minute. Where, where is she? Where is she? Mary Lewis. Where are you going now? I'm very, hang on. Let's keep an eye on her then. Hang on. So I put it onto that. Where is she going? She, oh, she's going into here. She's having a little sort of minimally invasive operation thingamajig. Oh, this is exciting. We've not seen this before. So who's actually doing the, um, who's doing the work? Ducky Duck. <laughs> okay. Which is brilliant. So Ducky Duck is, uh, yeah, Doc, Dr. Duck just doing a spot of this. So yeah, she's being treated uh, with, what is this then? I don't know. I don't know that possibly. Yeah, thoracentesis. I imagine that is what is happening right now to remove fluid or air from the pleural space. Um, 
LD got a bit drunk and won't feel very good today. Oh, LD. Oh, dear. On a, on a school night. Tut, tut. Um, okay, never mind. They'll be fine. They'll muddle through. Right, here we go. So run time on a bit quicker because this is taking a while. Uh, Jane Clark is collapsing. But all they're doing is typing on the computer. <laughs> Patricia Hall is collapsing. Again, it's all fine, everybody. Are we sure that this, um, that Ducky Duck isn't just typing out a very, very long email? What are they doing? I'm a bit confused as to what they're doing. Lisa Williams. Oh, hang on a minute. Hang on. You're going to a... Ah, you're going to the... Hang on. Pause time a minute. Let's just make sure you're okay. So you are going to a lab. Are you going to pick up your results? I imagine that's the problem. Okay, so you're going to go into the lab through the... <laughs> you shouldn't be in here, madam. It literally says no. Did it say no entry on the door? Oh, no. Biohazard. I don't think you should be walking in the bit that says biohazard on it that's generally a bad idea please don't go in there again thank you right hang on back up we go just make sure that this where is it where are we over there right so she's had the operation by the look of it and now she's being sort of pushed in a wheelchair okay so yeah she had that thing there so is she okay now is she is she feeling good our very first patient over here is she is she okay now she's in high dependency Frank Scott's having a collapse. That's okay, Frank. They're fine. Um, so hang on. Is there anybody else here? No. At the moment, she is our one and only patient in hospitalization over in internal medicine. But I think it should be okay. She's got all these things to have as active treatments. But I think she should be okay. Hope this is going to be fine. We might possibly have a little bit of a money problem in the morning. Um, we possibly could do with coming, yeah, getting a little bit more money and then not being in debt or coming out of debt very quickly. But I think, uh, oh, Pat oh, Patricia Hall is collapsing again. Okay, can we please rush Patricia Hall? She's got an abdominal shattered wound. She's in a very bad way, is Patricia Hall. Can we please make sure that she is seen to really quickly? Also, wound closure might be a good idea. <laughs> but we close up those wounds. That would help quite a lot, wouldn't it? In making sure that she doesn't die. Um, however, yes, we've got 10% more people coming in, which is useful. And our prestige was 100% yesterday. So we get 105% of patients coming in and they're paying 120% of their insurance monies. So it's all looking pretty good. It's looking good. We haven't looked at this for ages. Um, hang on a second. So quick snap care. Oh, yeah, we need to finish the event thing. We need an event. And that nearly, yeah, we nearly completed that. But failing the event that we did last time didn't help, did it? So which four have we got on? So cheapo care. Liver TY, quick snap care, and overcuring. Okay, right, that's fine. So nothing to do with those. We can't make any changes to make sure we get more people in or whatever. Um, okay, this is all fine. So let's get through to seven o'clock. We didn't go into debt. We didn't go into debt at seven o'clock when we paid the night shift, which is good. So we've now, hang on, where is she going? Is she going to the loo? She might be going to the toilet. Are there, are there any toilets up here? Um, no. That's a little bit of a problem, isn't it? There are no toilets up that end of the hospital. There's some here, and there are some there. There's going to be some there. Uh, and there's some over there, but there are none over here. Maybe, possibly, that corridor could extend around this corner, and we could have some, like a bathroom across there. Because I don't know what else is going to fill that space, but a bathroom is going to be quite useful. Um, and Dusty River finished that as well. Uh, go and do it again, please, Dusty River. That was very efficient of you. We just told you to do that, didn't we? Did they do that quicker, possibly? Um, Karen Baker's collapsing. Again, it's fine. They'll sort it out, Karen. Don't you worry, because you're possibly unconscious, but it's fine. Right, where are you going now? Hang on a minute. Let's make sure we know where you're going. Are you going to get a drink? Oh, okay. Are they not bringing you drinks? We've got nurses to bring you lovely drinks and things. They've got drinks trolleys. Hang on a minute. Hang on. They just put down food over there or something. Yeah, there's like a little breakfast tray just there. Why have they put that out there? Have we got another person over here that I've not seen? Yes, we have. Hello, who are we? Hang on, no. You're Karen Robinson. We've got another person over here. This is wonderful. Okay, so you've got pleurisy. Okay, I've heard of that, but I can't remember what it is. Pleurisy refers to a condition when the membranes surrounding the lungs become inflamed. Okay. So you're going to give us four and a half grand. Wow, that's a lot of money for treating that. That is very good. Um, where's where's Thingamabob gone? Where's Mary Lewis? Has she gone home? 
Maybe Mary Lewis has gone home. Hang on a second. Is her? No, she's still around somewhere. Mary Lewis is around. Whereabouts are you, Mary Lewis? What are you up to? So make sure you're okay because you're our first patient over here. I want to make sure that everything is working fine. Um, we've got to the sort of the money, where the money comes in from the overnight people. And we're back up to about 45 grand, which is good. So I think now we can't spend too much stuff. We can't spend too much money because we have to make sure we keep the money to pay the day shift wages and such. So we just let it tick up. But I mean, yeah, it's coming in very nicely indeed. So yeah, we've made just about 20 grand today. Now over 20 grand, now 21 grand, now coming up to 22 grand. Okay, the money is pouring in. This is brilliant. Um, can we see how much of it uh, he's having a collapse is coming from our new department? 2,140 has come from internal medicines clinic. None of it's come from hospitalization yet, I guess because nobody's left. So yeah, we've got to wait maybe another day for that to start paying out. So that's fine though. That's fine. That's okay. Uh, what's that? General... What's that? General surgery. That's making a good pile of money. That's very good. Everything is yeah, looking okay. Everything is looking okay. The money is coming in. Infectious disease is making quite a bit of money. Okay, right. Up to about 30 grand in profit now. 60 grand, 61 grand. This is wonderful. This is very good indeed. Um, I think, yeah, well, I want to see Mary Lewis through the whole procedure here. Oh, hang on, hang on, hang on a second. There's, there's loads of people over here. Rachel Miller is in. So she's in the regular ward for acute mastoiditis. I don't know what that is. Mastoiditis refers to an infection and inflammation of the mastoid cells located in the mastoid process in the temporal bone beneath the ear. The temporal bone. That sounds very exciting. Um, okay. So she's got an infected ear. Is that? Is that what that's saying? Possibly. And then we've got a person over there. Charles White. Charles White is in high dependency. Uh, because he had aspergillosis or aspergillosis. Again, I have no idea what that is. Dr. Penge is very confused. Aspergillosis is a respiratory disease caused by the fungus aspergillus or aspergillus or whatever. If the patient has a weakened immune system, the invasive form of the disease spreads through the lungs. Infected lungs must undergo pulmonary surgery to clear the infection. Uh, so that's kind of like a a fungal lung infection and they have to actually do a little bit of surgery to clear out the spores or whatever out of your lungs. <laughs> that sounds thoroughly undesirable. However, the big problem for us is that there are already now two beds in, well, there's only two beds in high dependency and they're both occupied, which is a little bit of a bother. Where are you going? You're going for an examination uh, Karen Cole's collapsing. Karen Cole will be fine. I have faith in the staff. Um, so yeah, so you are now in here. Oh no, you've been examined. And now you're being taken back to... Oh, hang on. Where are you going? Everything Trish has leveled up. Well done, everything Trish. Good job. Enjoy the pay rise. Where are you going? You're going for whatever that machine is. A, C a CT scan or an MRI scan. Oh, botherations, epidemic outbreak. <laughs> an infectious patient wasn't hospitalized in an isolation unit. Ah, bother. Right, okay, that's two days of issues. That's not very good. Um, I mean, oh, hang on, where are they? Are they, are they being isolated now? Or are they just sort of hanging about somewhere? Um, no, they're over there. It's got Ebola. And he's just hanging around in this ward over here. Oh dear. Right, okay, hang on. Why isn't he over? Is it because we have no vacancies over here? Or is it just because nobody went and moved him around? Um, there's vacancies. Yeah, there, there's, there's space for him to come up here. We just didn't get it done in time. Bother. Okay, never mind. Never mind. That's what we're going to have to deal with. That's going to hit the prestige. It's going to hit the money and everything else. Breaking news. Oh, here we go. Right. An event is happening. Food contamination at a local restaurant has caused a serious outbreak of illness. Even though health inspectors have closed the restaurant down, local hospitals must be prepared for an increased influx of patients. Okay. Right. So we accept this. Yeah, a few people said you should always accept and take over all the patients. But I'm not confident enough in doing that. I think that might result in me making many mistakes. We'll trust in our medical staff. I believe in you all, lovely people who now work in the hospital. It's going to be fine. So, uh, yeah, I think, I think if we accept this, so it's going to be 
sort of like not it's not going to be over here it's not a kind of a, a disaster if you like so it's not going to be in whatever that is again i forgot what it's called traumatology because last time the event was over there and it was you know all sorts of you know burns and uh, uh, like sort of blast damage and such like this is more sort of ill people where's that gonna go i don't know let's accept that and see what happens so cure patients zero okay so they're going to be making their way in now the only thing is if we fail this that's going to then bring this back down to bring this counter down for the no untreated patients for 10 days thing and we're back to square one with that which is a bit unfortunate but here we go let's see what we can do holy man of cakes has finished holy man of cakes we might possibly need you around the place just in case that's where all these people are going and also we might possibly need some hang on gastritis Okay, Sarah Gonzalez in. Gastritis is general surgery. Okay, that's fine. Um, that's just diet modification. That's all that says. Okay, this might be okay. We might be able to cope with this. So yeah, we can see... Oh, oh no, hang on. <laughs> Sarah Gonzalez is now collapsing. Okay, no, that this isn't okay. This is, this is a terrible thing. That's not okay at all. Right, I think what we have to do is... Okay, hang on a second... Uh, we need to we need to really prioritize all of these people make sure they're all coming in nice and quick here we go <laughs> please don't die any of you because that would just ruin everything and make everybody very sad right okay all sorted let's watch this let's see what happens so sarah gonzalez is in intensive care Ah, uh, you're in a doctor, you've been examined, waiting, been examined, examined, being called, going to the doctor. Okay, right, so the emergency department have done a really good job of examining everybody. The emergency department did a grand job. Look at that, they're all in. I like the way the people have occupations. A manager, an athlete, an acrobat, teachers, factory workers, office clerks, acrobat. Quite a few acrobats around the place. <laughs> we bump into many acrobats. And um, how long have we got? 12 minutes to sort this out. And it's going over to... The end of the day shift. We've got 32 grand remaining, which is pretty good. Elizabeth Robinson, are you one of these people? No, you're not. Okay, right. So we're okay for that for now. Right. We need to get these people sorted and cured really quickly. It looks like it is actually on underway. Look, going to waiting rooms. Jane White, she's all germy, so it's nothing to do with this lot. We're just going to watch this at the minute. We're just going to watch this. Ah, you've gone up to general surgery. Okay, this is good. Frank Young. Okay, are you any of these, Frank? No, you're not. But we do now need some more beds over here. It was going to happen eventually, wasn't it? We knew it was going to happen. We need some more beds over here because this department is getting busy. Um, okay, right. Go to here. We shall copy for now just one bed. Copy one of those and then copy one of these arrangements, just in case, just in case. So that's a huge chunk of money gone on that. So that might be a bit of a problem overnight when we, when we get to the morning, we have to pay the staff. But okay, that'll do for now. So hopefully that means you can now go into a bed. Uh, whereabouts are you? Are you being transported? I think that's you in that chair, isn't it? In the wheelchair. Uh, yes, okay, right, good. So you're sorted. Let's go back to the patients. We've cured 20% of them, apparently. Two of them have been cured. So 30%. Okay, this is good. Karen Lee's had a bit of a collapse. It's okay. Three of them have been dealt with. This is encouraging. This is encouraging. Um, Elizabeth Gonzalez. Oh, there's no free bed for the required hospitalization observation. Okay. Where's observation again? Remind me. Observation. Observ oh, hang on. Observation room is... Um, is where is it? it's it's down here somewhere where is the observation room i know where it is somewhere it's down there of course it is opposite the trauma center right we need another bed in there stat right now because we have to pass this event then we've got to deal with the event properly to unlock all sorts of exciting stuff so here we go let's go back into here and we shall grab that arrangement there oh it's going to be really expensive it's another five grand we're going to be plunged into debt again are we but never mind never mind right so hopefully then they can where is it you can then go where you need to go so yes you're now hospitalized just check that you're in the right place there right you've gone into that bed that we just put together right this is good this is good 
How are we doing for everything else? Still on 30%, but we have got eight minutes left. We don't have that much time to start with, so I think it's looking okay. It's looking okay. I think if we can just chip away a few more of these, we should be good. So gastritis, cholangitis, another one's done. Irritable bowel syndrome. And of course, the more we get done, sure that means that there's more doctors available to go and you know, deal with the other one. So yeah, if we start just getting a few done, that'll be fun. We've got seven minutes left. Seven minutes to get this sorted. Um, a few people are waiting over here. A few people are waiting for Damon. Who is Damon? And what, I know, hang on, that's Dr. Damon. Right, they're switching it around a little bit. They're making that a little bit better. Got six minutes and counting. We're still only doing 40%. Can we at least get over 50% before we miserably fail this? <laughs> and then next time I will take control of everybody and try it that way. But just for now, can we get over 50%? Come on, there's five minutes left. What exactly do we need to do? What are people waiting for? So Elizabeth is waiting for... Um, what, where are you even? Oh no, you're, down, you're the one down there. You might potentially be a bit of a problem, Elizabeth Gonzalez. Um, because what are we going to do with you? What do we do with you? I don't quite know. I'm not entirely sure. Um, I mean, what's one with uh, Dana King? She's got one of these things over here. Oh no, it's blood work. Are they all waiting for blood work? You're waiting for blood results. You're waiting for blood results. Oh no. <laughs> You're waiting for some sort of diagnosis between those two okay right this, 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 this we're not going to do this in four minutes time are we there's no way we're going to get all these people treated dana king is even getting so impatient <laughs> she's one of these people lisa brown's having a collapse i'll sort that out oh botherations okay the events are quite hard then the events are quite tricky maybe i should sort of handle them i thought this one would be a little bit easier than the other one because when we have previously involved so yeah proper sort of damage and operations and such like this one i think is just people getting treated but i think yes eric i say it's it's the blood work it's the blood results that's going to be what finishes us off on this particular event okay so we're not going to pass this event and that's going to come down to zero out of ten and we're going to get hit with a fine as well frank wright is now getting impatient ah dearie me barbara lewis i imagine is possible one of these dana king has waited too long and has gone home. Okay. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> right. Okay. That 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 uh, that didn't work. Yes. Uh, the patient, that no, was a complete event in time, or one of the patients was misdiagnosed, died, or was transported away. They weren't transported away. They just went away. A prestige drop for this day. Re really? It can't be, can't get much lower. A prestige is currently 23%, but Dusty River did a level up, so that's good. <laughs> Oh, dearie me. Right, so we're not looking good at the moment. Oh, Mary Lewis has collapsed now as well. Wonderful. Right, let's speed time on to seven o'clock when everything is going to go horribly wrong with our money. So we're minus $13,000 down and we're getting 79% oh, of the patients still coming in um, and the insurance payments are still 100%. So that's okay. That's okay. So we might be able to claw it back. If we get to eight o'clock, yes, whatever. All these event people coming in and causing problems. If we get to eight o'clock, hopefully then all the money can pour in and we can start seeing some money going our way. There we go. Right, so let's try and at least break even for the day, shall we? With all the people sort of paying up and such like. Um, yeah, well, okay, it's fine. <laughs> people are waiting. I, whatever, Frank, right? It's okay. Just clear off and come back when you want to. It's fine. Brook Lewis is collapsing. Somebody sort that out. And there we go. Right, we've actually made a profit today so far of all of $198. Oh, there we go. It's ticking up okay. It's going up okay. Got less people in, though. That's a bit unfortunate. We have got the event people still in. Of course, they don't just evaporate. They're still here in the hospital, which um, is okay, I suppose, because at least they can sort of, you know, have some treatments and such like. But yeah, we're going to get... got 68 people. We had 90-something the other day, didn't we? And prestige today is 44%. Oh, dearie me. Um, yeah, whatever. It's fine. Um, so, yeah, we need that to tick up. So, 44%. Complete the 40. 42% uh, is a wrong direction game. More. 45%. There we go. Um, I mean, we're struggling. The medical labs are struggling. 
Susan King is collapsing. Please don't die, anybody. That'll hit the prestige even more. <laughs> this could go horribly wrong. For some reason, the pathology department have got one star. They've not got anything to do. I feel like that's a little bit harsh. <laughs> but okay. Um, right. I think what we do is that's not worked well, has it? I mean, we've got, we're making some money. As long as we can pay the wages. If we can pay the wages on the... Hang on. Wages on the clinic is... Uh, oh, hang on. I don't know how to work out. I would want a day shift and night shift more than clinic and hospitalisation. I quite know. We need about, I don't know, 38 grand. So we should be okay. We should be okay to break even, I think. So when we actually pay the day shift wages, we'll be okay. That should be fine. So we're not going to go into the red. Of course, then we have to get some money and pay the night shift wages. We've got less people in and they're paying a little bit less money. And the epidemic isn't helping either. So this is all going wonderfully well. Uh, we failed the event. That brings that back down. So I think next time, I'll give it a go at sort of handling the event myself. I'll take all the people on board and just you know, deal with it myself. Because my concern was that I would be rubbish at it and it would go horribly wrong. But I mean, we've had two events so far and they've both gone really quite horribly wrong anyway. So, I mean, if I ever go and it goes horribly wrong... We've not lost out on anything yet. We're still just at the horribly wrong status of things. So I think that's what we'll do. I'll have a go at that next time. Just some money coming in there. There's 400 money coming in. I like seeing all the money coming in. Um, but yeah, I think that's what we'll do. I'd like to just get through to eight o'clock just to see what happens when we pay the wages. What's going to happen? How's prestige? Up to 54%. Okay, so really struggling, but trying our best to get that up a little bit. We're struggling. I mean, that doesn't help either. The epidemic thing doesn't help because people are working slower. We see less people. We get more money. People are a bit grumpy with the service because, of course, they're doing things more carefully. So, come on. Here we go. Get through to 8 o'clock. Joe, you know what? We'll get through to the end of the day, actually. Let's get through to the end of the day just to see where we stand on the, you know, the coming day. So, here we go. I also completely failed to check on, what's her name? Mary Lewis. Sorry, Mary Lewis. Right, so we've paid the day shift wages. Got 12,750 monies, which is good. That's okay. Yeah, I forgot to check on Mary. Is she still here? I imagine she's not here anymore. Um, that's, that's Susan King. Yeah, Mary was over here. She was in that bed, wasn't she? That's Dana White. And that's Frank Williams. Um, okay. Yeah, so I assume that Mary Lewis, the person we built this entire big hospitalisation bit for, was treated and went away and was all happy. I assume that went well. Um, I mean, yeah, sorry, Mary. I didn't mean to forget you, but we had a bit of an emergency. There was an event going on. There were people with poorly tums and such like, so we had to sort that out. But, uh, but yeah, there we go. At least she did get treated properly. So let's get through to the end of the day. I'm not looking forward to checking our prestige. We've got three stars right now. If that could just creep up the tiniest bit, that would be brilliant. So here we go. What are we looking at? 60%. Okay. So yesterday was 70%. Oh, no. Okay, do you know what? It's fine. If that could just... Oh, no, John Jones. John Jones, do not bring that down. 61%. Okay, that might help. That 1% might possibly help out a little bit. If we could just get maybe another percent on that. Botherations. Okay, 61%. All the staff... Ah, right, the epidemic is over, so that's good. But now we're on patient intake, 71%. Insurance payment's still on 100%, though, which is good. And nothing is coming down from events as this bonus from events is on zero percent rather than minus ten percent okay right so we're kind of back to square one as it were we now need to try and get things sorted again we need to make sure we don't let infectious people hang around this bit of the hospital too long because that's quite bad so um right i think what we'll do is we'll finish up for now and then when we come back next time it might again just be a case of waiting for some money to come in but now of course we have another department to hopefully generate some money. And in fact, quick check on that. Um, ooh, it made 11 and a half grand did hospitalization over in internal medicine. And we paid about three and a half grand-ish on wages. So that made, I can't work that out, eight grand was that? So in total, actually looking at that look, in total yesterday, hang on a second. Hang on, is that right? Day 74. So day 74, so emergency made 2,600. That's okay. Um, we do pay quite a lot of wages in the clinic, a bit of that. Uh, general surgery actually lost 7 
1,700 money because they didn't have that much in the way of hospitalization stuff going on. Um, internal medicine made about six grand. Orthopedics lost three grand. Um, viruses did very well, making us a profit of $12,705. Uh, traumatology made a bit. Um, admin made almost four grand. Wow, that's a lot of things being sold in the gift shop or from the cafeteria or whatever. Um, and yeah, the other ones don't really do anything as such um, in terms of generating cash. Okay, so money is looking dodgy, but I think we can muddle through. I think we'll be okay. If we just have to kind of, you'll have to rain, rain back the building a little bit and just calm it down. If we have to get extra beds and such like, we will do. But I don't think we can do any kind of huge big building projects again until we get stuff sorted out. And really... It's a case of waiting for that event. We need that event and we have to complete the event. And we've tried twice and failed twice now because of course, if we complete that event, that then unlocks the event buttons. Then we can make an event appear of our own and we can work our way through these. We can get happy life down here. They can send loads of people to us. It shall be wonderful. And then we can make loads of money and it shall all be glorious. But until that happens, until we complete that event, we're a bit stuck. So I think, yeah, we'll come back next time. Let time tick on a bit. Try and get some money in. Hopefully, yeah, everything will tick over very well. We'll avoid any viral kind of outbreak things. And we can then have a go at another event. Fingers crossed we actually get it sorted that time. But yeah, we'll finish up for now. Come back next time and see if we can do all that stuff that I just said. Hopefully, you are still enjoying this. If you are, please do leave a like. That would be most marvellous indeed. And also, if you're not already, then please do subscribe to keep up to date with how we get on here next time out in Project Hospital. But for now, thank Thank you very much for joining me in the Geek Cupboard, and I will see you next time. Yay! Okay, exciting things are happening. Where does Gigantic Big Stabby Knife live? They're D&D nerding, they've got a dice tower, and they've got character sheets, and they've got some dice. Oh, this is wonderful. Look at my best life. Oh my goodness me, so much undergarmentage. Oh, thank goodness. <laughs> Praise be, the kettle has been uncovered.